All right, so once you've extracted the zip file, let's go and open your IDE. So in this tutorial series, I'll be using IntelliJ and I recommend you do the same because it has the best support for Kotlin. It also works well with Spring Boot. Uh, if you wanna use Eclipse or NetBeans, that works just fine as well. Just make sure to install the Kotlin plugin. If you should have any uh, problems following along, please try using IntelliJ as it's of course the easiest way to follow along just using the exact same tooling. Now, depending on your IntelliJ version, this uh, project start window here might look a bit different, but just look for a open button and then open up the location where you have your, uh, where you extracted your project. For me, that will be uh, this one here, Spring Boot the New Boston. Once you open it, it's gonna start building the project using Gradle and it will download, um, well, the Gradle distribution if you don't have it yet. Um, and we'll just start downloading all the dependencies and everything that you need. So for me, since I already have the Gradle version installed and so on, it only took 15 seconds, but it might take a few minutes depending on your system and your setup. So just give it a moment to get everything done. And once it's finished, just go to the project view on the left-hand side and open up the project directory here. Now, before we dive into all the different files and what they mean and how you can use them, let's just open up the source folder and then under main and Kotlin, you will find the main entry point into the Spring Boot application. Mm -hmm. So here, because I called my artifact the new Boston, it generated a class called the new Boston application. So let me just go ahead and rename this really quick. So I'm just gonna fix at least the casing here. The rest should be fine for now. And then let's also uh, update the name of the test class that was also generated for us. And that already looks a lot better. Now let's just go ahead and run this application first of all, and just see it in action before we do anything else. All right, so once it starts up, you can see here in the uh, run dialog, you can see it logs uh, spring, first of all, and then it starts up the whole application. You can also see the version that we selected that's being used here. You can see it's starting the new Boston application. And then down here, you should see Tomcat has started on port 8080. So this is the default port that it will use and if it starts up successfully, you should see this log message uh, in your log files. So let's go ahead and check out this application in the browser. So over here, let's open up localhost at port 8080. And that's just gonna give you a white label error page, which already means that you have a Tomcat running and you have a Spring Boot application that just doesn't really know what to do uh, with this request over here. So that's why you can see it's not found. Uh, if you didn't have anything running on this port, it wouldn't be able to connect in the first place. If you wanna get rid of the error page, what you can do really easily is you can go into the resources. And then in the static folder here, you can add a new file, a new index.html, and you can just, let's say, we put a headline here and say, hello, Spring Boot. So with this, just rerun your application. You can also tell it to not ask again in the future and just rerun. So you can do that with Shift F10 or you can also click the button up here. So now with these changes, let's try again and let's refresh this page in the browser and you should see you have Hello Spring Boot there. So it's just showing the index HTML, whatever you put in there is gonna be shown at the root path of your application. Now, if you have any trouble running this project and if you get an error such as uh, cannot access class java.lang.class, uh, you might have to go into your project settings. So for this, you can use control alt shift s. So it's a bit of a hard uh, combination of keys, or you could also go ahead and go to file and then project structure. And then just make sure you have a proper project SDK selected here. You can use a JDK 11 um, or JDK 
15, just to make sure that it can find all the Java classes in your class path. All right, so hit OK, and that should do the trick. Uh, make sure there are no errors down here as well in the file and that it starts up uh, successfully. All right, so far so good, but we didn't come here to write HTML code. So let's create a more Spring Boot-like Hello World application. And let's create our first controller or REST endpoint for this. So let's create a new Kotlin class or file. By the way, I'm using Alt Insert to create new elements in the tree here. And let's call this one simply Hello World Controller. So this is a new Kotlin class or file. Hit enter. And then this one, well, so far it's just a regular class. So in order to tell Spring Boot to make this a REST controller, just add the annotation called REST controller. And this will tell Spring Boot to initialize this class and to um, make this responsible for handling REST requests. Next, you need another annotation here called uh, request mapping. And this one defines the path uh, to use in your REST or for this REST endpoint or for any endpoints in this class. So let's go ahead and say API hello. So this means now that um, this REST controller is responsible for any endpoints that start with API slash hello. So with the current application, that would be localhost 8080 slash API slash hello. Now in order to actually um, add a mapping here, let's create a function. And in Kotlin to create a function or a method, just write fun and then give it a name such as hello world. And this will simply return a string. And then let's just say we return, hello, this is a rest endpoint. Now, when you have a very simple function like this one in Kotlin, meaning one where the whole function is really just one simple expression, you can also refactor it by converting it to an expression body and just writing it with an equal sign. And that's just the exact same thing, just written a bit more concisely. Now there's one more thing we need, which is another annotation on this method. And here we can use get mapping in order to say that this is supposed to be a get endpoint. Now a get endpoint is typically just to uh, fetch some data. And here the data we fetch is a very simple string, but later on it will be things like um, the list of banks that you saw in the beginning. Now on this get mapping annotation, you could also add another part of the path. So if you wanted something like, let's say API slash hello slash um, spring boot, you could do it like this or even just like this. And that would mean this will be appended to this base path. So like I said, this would turn out to be localhost 8080 slash API slash hello slash spring boot. Now here in this example, we don't need this, so let's get rid of it. And this way, uh, this get mapping will simply use the parent path over here. So just API hello. And that's all, you now have your first REST endpoint. So let's restart the application, again using shift dot, uh, and F10. And then let's just give it a second um, to rebuild the application and then restart it. So here Tomcat started on port 8080. So let's go over to the browser. On the root path, we can still see our index.html. And now if we go to slash API slash hello, we should see the content that comes from the get endpoint. So hello, this is a rest endpoint. All right, perfect. So with this, you are now set up um, and ready to go, ready to add your um, actual business logic and proper endpoints. So let's go ahead and do that in the next tutorials. All right, perfect. So you've created your first web service based on Spring Boot. You have the project ready to go for the next few tutorials. If you liked it so far, please leave a like below and also check out my YouTube channel where I'll be posting a lot more about front-end and also back-end development. For now, let's continue with these Spring Boot tutorials.